I had some time this morning to do another carving video. I've been away from them for a while and trying to get back in the swing of it. And this project is on the set of drawings, the second set of drawings. It is a guiloche, which is an art history term for this series of interlinked circles like that. And this I learned from a couple of different pieces of furniture from Ipswich, Massachusetts. And, uh, but it's a pattern you find uh, in lots of places, lots of variations on how these uh, centers of these circles are filled in. So I call the pattern the rosettes because it's mostly about carving those uh, designs inside. But um, that interlinked circle will help you as well. Uh, there's a lot of fun stuff. It's a really popular pattern. Everybody likes it. Well, most everybody. And uh, so I'll show you how I outline it with a compass and cut it with the V-tool and then fill all these in with various gouges. What I've done thus far is just marked out, you can't see them, they're scratched on here, uh, a horizontal margin top and bottom and a center line between them and then struck a line 90 degrees to that uh, to function as a vertical center line and where those two center lines hit I'll start by scribing this circle so this is three inches in diameter um, those margins are three inches apart and then I'll just from that same center point strike an interior circle about that big now, there, it's a whole row of circles. So this inner circle on the next one hits that outer circle. So that gives me a way to locate the next two center points if you start in the middle. And now from here, I either reset the compass or work with two compasses. I'll just reset it to the large diameter. And you can see now how that overlaps its neighbor like that. And I can find the next one by this is going to hit that inside circle here now and that center line. And I know these are hard to see. I'm going to trace one of them with a pencil to show you the gist of it. And back to the small diameter. And these will be the last two. Like that. So what those look like, here's that outer circle and inner circle, like that, and then its neighbor runs right uh, into it. But this one, I'm going to carve. That's going to be the first step I do. Is this from 12 o'clock here on the outside of that circle down to the inside of the next one to there. And that's how I begin this carving. And that's done with the V-tool. just stop there and I do the same thing on the next one
so right at the top and I've got the V-tool outside the line really. And now inside the line. Like that. Inside this one. Outside that one. Then to complete it, you pick up where you were and stop right there. Then pick up that one. So that's very simple. I'll finish it off. And just so you see it again, uh, finish over here. And this one's going to close it, so this one will come all the way around. I'll do it in sections. Pretty much stop there. And now come up to here. And the same thing, I don't even know if you can see your way over here, but... So that's the main outline. You can add a, um, a center line down these bands. So I've gone back to my original center point and just struck that line. And you can do this when you're doing your initial layout. I wanted to simplify the initial layout because this is optional find carvings that have this center line and probably more that don't. And what I often describe as the chicken way of doing this is to make this cut lighter than the others depending on that width that you've got there. Um, I have, well, the lines were laid out about seven sixteenths apart, uh, close to a half. If they're narrower than that, this center line is not really practical. But you do want to be careful. Not to blow out the wood left and right of this.
and two ways to succeed at that are make sure you have enough width that this is practical and the other is to lighten up on this cut make it not quite as deep as the others Alright, now I'm really done with the outline. And now we'll look at what to put on the insides of these. The danger of being my own cameraman is I don't know when I have forgotten to hit record. And I just did. So I've begun this, and you, uh, I'll try to show you what I did. I had a vertical center line, a horizontal center line, and I took this gouge and struck it with the mallet, connecting that vertical center line and the V-tool circle, left and right, and east and west here, all the way around. And then with a narrow and shallow tool removed behind that chip to pop that out. So that gets you the outline of this sort of four-leaf clover shape. And then just took the gouge and struck that mark right there. Uh, and this is, what is it, the, um, the three-quarter, one-half. So the circle is three-quarters of an inch and the tool is half an inch wide. So that's how I get to this part at this point, and I'll show you what I did to create that void. I first, as I said, struck that right there. Then with a very narrow tool that's 5 sixteenths of an inch wide and per describes a 5 sixteenths inch circle, um, just make these two bits left and right, top and bottom, and they aim this way so that I'll strike a line with a chisel like that and like that. And that chisel in this case is three-eighths of an inch wide, the bevel to the waist, like that, and like that. So I'll do this other one here, and usually you would make all these cuts at once on each part of this pattern. So once you've struck them all, cutting the background out, I take it out with hand pressure very carefully. Make that cut first. Coming toward that chip and then to the chisel mark. And at times I'm just using the corner of the tool 
to get that out. And rock around like that. And like that. When it's so small, you have to be extra careful not to blow it apart. The background of these is like most of the backgrounds. It doesn't need to be dead flat, uh, which is good because it would be pretty hard to get in that little space. Now you see the finished one has that little bit nipped off of it there. So that's one of the last things I do is uh, just like that with the same three quarter inch gouge or half inch wide, three quarter gouge like that. Just to take those out and then come in with the corner of the tool, pair them off like that. So. I hope that gets you the idea. Sorry we missed the beginning of this pattern because this is the one I was only going to do once in this sequence. To finish it off I take a wider chisel and just strike those lines. Uh, they were marking gauge lines and now I'm just incising them with the chisel like that. And there you have that one. All right, this time I was sure to hit record, so we won't have that particular mishap again. We might have a different one. Um, one of the flower shapes that goes in here, I'll start with this tool, which is a one half, one half. The circle is half an inch and the width of it is half an inch. And right around my center point, I sort of strike this to outline a circle. When I'm doing this kind of thing, particularly with something so narrow, I tilt the tool towards those flutes there. And that lessens the chance of this lifting up. If you, uh, if you strike that the wrong way, you can lift a chip up ahead of that gouge like that and that would be fatal to this piece because I want that little circle to stay there and if you have this leaning the wrong way that'll rise up the flute there because you're driving that bevel into the wood so I lean it forward like that and if it forces any wood anywhere it's behind the tool um, now, using my uh, background tool, that shallow tool, I'll just come behind this a little bit, work my way around that circle to cut a little uh, depression around here. And the idea being, I'm going to hollow this section here and now by relieving it first right there I have um, I have reduced the chance of hitting that when I come out here with a mallet rest of that down.
this is pretty, um, it isn't terribly regular, it isn't uh, a finished surface I'm creating here. This is just making a hollow in which I'm going to cut this design. So, that's mostly good enough to get that shred out of there. I want it still to be that full height, that flat surface on the outer part of the circle, and just hollow down towards the middle. And I put back now a, oops, a vertical center line like that. and grab this tool which is three quarters of an inch wide and it's a one and three eighths inch circle. Is that going to really do it? Yeah. So left and right of that vertical center line I strike this gouge and uh, from time to time if you've seen any of these carving videos, you, you know I have a weird way to try to think of some of these shapes and this looks like parentheses. And then I do the same thing below and above the horizontal center line. And that forms the main petals for this pattern. Now I come behind those cuts with the tool now at an angle. Previously it was vertical, now it's angled down just to take that chip out like that and like that. And then do the same thing horizontally. These don't come out as nicely as the others. Because here I'm cutting sort of across the fibers, depending on the species of wood you're cutting, you'll get uh, better results with some than with others. This is white oak, and that's one of my favorites to carve. Now, I'm using a very narrow tool, the 5 16 inch one. I've created the four main petals here, but it sort of sub-creates these diagonal ones. And those you can just kind of round off just by nipping right there and right here. Same sort of thing, making that incised cut. and then coming behind it and taking out those bits. So it very quickly is creating this um, illusion with depth in it. It has some depth, but it's not much. Now I take this half-inch wide shallow gouge and with the bevel up I create sort of a, a bevel on the back of that cut, like that. And it's just to give it a little more definition. On these, on the ones running lengthwise, I don't make it a stab cut. I push the tool and just go like that and like that, going from the widest part down to a narrower, then from the widest part into the middle. So going down the fibers. Oh, today was going to be quiet in the neighborhood.
and then from the wide out to the narrow again. Then a couple of other things uh, going back to the little piece I often call a button there. I want to round that over as well, the same kind of way, taking it from the wide to the narrow, so from 6 o'clock on this thing up to 3, and from 12 o'clock down to 3, just pairing ever so slightly there. And it looks kind of blank, so I can use this um, smaller gouge here to just incise pieces in those. Like that. And use a punch. that. And you can call that one done. So I'll reset the camera and go through it a lot quicker, but show you those steps on it over here. The trick is to not get in the way. And I wondered about the size of that first tool. That one's a little small. I'm going to step up to something a little wider. It calls on the drawings for half inch, half inch, and I use something smaller than that on here, which is good because using a bigger one is uh, easier and less chance of breaking that piece off. Same principle applies. I'm leaning the tool forward like that to um, incise this. And so that's a half inch circle, half inch wide. Now the cuts that come right to that. And these are steep and short. I'm not coming way back here and pushing towards that. I'm doing all of this right near the initial incised cut. And you'll lose some of these. It happens still to me. I've done these for decades. And some days you a little bit of inattention and off it goes. Whether you glue it back or not is your business, not mine. I usually don't. But there's times when I have hard part here is to stay out of the way of the camera, which I know right there I did not do. Tiny bit more right there. So restrike that center line. Well, restrike it, it wasn't there to begin with. And now these first lines, the parentheses, sort. Right away this is better than the first go around because these curves are making it all the way to that central button. 
so you can see the pattern a lot better. horizontal ones yeah. and this is one of those designs that um, and there's lots of them that at various stages of it you could just stop and leave it at that and still have a really nice pattern and, and that's a pretty good spot you could bevel that down from there and pretty much leave that as is and have something pretty nice but I'll keep adding the details uh, I'm switching to a little more curve for this as well. Like that. And this might be the tool I actually call for in the drawings that I kind of think I picked up the wrong one on the first version of this carving. It's good I do them both. Uh, good, good I do them twice. Uh, whoops. Take that out. With the tool I made it with. just part of the tool so I'm driving the corner of it in like that let's see it there and then uh, where did I go this cut that I talked about with the bevel up and it's just Creating that chamfer, really, or that just that little bevel, which is just another way to catch some light. It isn't very wide, but you'd be surprised at what it uh, what it does for the carving. And now here on the long ones. I have to push the tool like that and then from this point toward the middle so that's just following the fibers of the um, piece of wood and now from that high point down to the middle again from over here I'm right in the way and off to the end and again, off to the end. And then, those cuts. And uh, lately I've been using a really small punch just a plain old nail set. Uh, I had seen some carvings recently that were peppered with tiny tiny punches like that and uh, I've been experimenting with it. Usually it was a very big punch but lately I'm liking uh, that sort of thing. So that's a much better execution than the first one. Uh, main difference being that that middle piece is much bigger 
than my first go around. Sometimes I go back and just restrike that just to emphasize that cut there. And that'll particularly make a difference when there's uh, an oil finish on there, too. All right, one more pattern. All right, the last one. Um, it begins the same as the previous. I'll get right in the way again. So there's that uh, hollow, and I'll do this beveling while I'm here, while I have that tool. Uh. And just like I did moments ago, uh, sometimes I'll go back around and restrike the outline just to emphasize that shape. Just sort of help set things off a bit. Now, using the three quarter inch wide gouge, this pattern is just sort of a pinwheel all around here. So I'll set the gouge, well, I'll do it this way so you can see it, from that vertical center line and I try to take it so one part of the gouge is sort of straight so I've, I'm going to let me get a pencil Where'd it go? going to sort of come straight off here and then let the gouge do its curving that way like that and then just follow that around I don't mark these out, I don't measure the spacing, and it usually works out okay. So here I know I've got about room for one more, two more would be kind of tight, let's see. Yeah, two was okay. And once I've done that, this is one of the first exercises I teach in carving. It's just making that vertical chip like this and then coming back behind it to cut out that. And instead of doing them in a straight row, these radiate around this middle. That's too deep and it didn't come out. So re-strike it. And some of that is just trying to avoid the camera, just getting in a weird position.
and that one you can see that bit that didn't come off so I re-strike the vertical part and then it comes away. So this last one is the tricky one because what you're cutting towards is weakened. So you don't want to have too much pressure right there at the end because that is all the solid wood there is and you can lose that last one. So this is another case of it could stay just like that. But what I tend to do is take that really narrow, um, deeply curved gouge and nip these off like that. And then Sometimes using that, or in this case the shallower, flatter tool, come behind those and take those bits out. Coming that way. It's hard to get at sometimes. And so you can see what that does, it just helps make those um, petals look distinct like that. And then you can make that sort of back bevel on the proud side of those petals like that. It's only on the that high side, not on the hollowed side. Like that. There's a little bit of cleanup, but uh, that I wasn't happy with right there. I want that deeper like that. Same right there. And you can fuss too much with these things. And take the smaller version of that same gouge and make a vein in those petals and put a punch out at the ends of those strikes like that. One of the finishing touches can be to take that background tool, the bevel up, and round over the outside of that outline, like that. And that has to stop right at the horizontal bit. And on the inside it has to go bevel down. And you got to come up that circle there to 12 o'clock. But down this one, the bell up. Like that. And up. No, down this one. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself. And then to create the 
that little illusion that they are woven. Let me get this done. You just bevel the last bit right there and right here as if it were winding underneath its neighbor there. And you can also further give that some depth cut out that background. Ah, come out of there. stuck on there, like that. And I texture that bit. could do this part at the beginning when you do the circles. the bevel that creates that little mock woven effect there. You can do that before or after rounding that off. Oops. That's a little bit of stuff hung on there. And now when I round this, I'll do all the ones from this position. See, I'll go right to the next circle and I'll finish that one off. And that's the way all of these repeating patterns get cut, is you do them all in succession. Makes it a lot faster. Carving this on video and carving it in life are two different things. But 
but this gives you a little indication of how it goes when I'm just working at it. And on and on. And it's very easy to miss a piece in this step. So you'll find yourself someday applying finish to a piece of furniture and say, oh look, I forgot to carve the part X, Y, or Z. But that's just how it goes sometimes. So I think that's done for the punching, that's all. So. I hope that helps you carve this pattern.